Hey Life Fellowship, my wife and I are out of town today. We've decided to take one last week of vacation. We actually headed up to the Niagara Falls area to see one of the wonders of God's creation. In fact, it's one of our favorite places to be. And I just know that we are being recharged and resting we're gonna be able to come back next week. Hey everybody, I'll be back next week and I cannot wait for it because we're beginning a brand new series entitled Words of Wisdom. I'm gonna be taking you verse by verse through the absolutely incredible book of Proverbs written by the only gazillionaire that ever lived, the wisest man that ever lived, King Solomon. There is so much depth so much wealth in God's word that'll have application for your life, very relevant for the day and age that we're living in right now. And I'm just telling you, tell your friends, spread the word. Come on, everybody. Let's be a part of this five-week series that is gonna absolutely jettison your Christian life to another place. And so even now, uh, just, just prepare your heart for that. Today, I am very excited. You know, God has been doing massively incredible things in our student ministry. I believe that the next move of God that is coming to this nation is coming on the heels of COVID, and it's coming in the midst of our young people. And the person that is leading the charge among our young people here at Life Fellowship is our very own youth pastor, Pastor Logan Howard. And I know that Pastor Logan has got a word from God for you today. I'm telling you, he is one of the sharpest young men that I've had the opportunity to pour into. And I know this, that God is going to use him in a massive way to bring a word for you. So come on, open up your heart to receive from God today. Open up your, your, your expectation for God to visit you in a massive way in this service. So come on, everybody, put your hands together for Pastor Logan. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. It, it is really an honor. Uh, I'm surprised Pastor Chris keeps asking me to come speak, so uh, you must trust me at least somewhat. But uh, guys, I just want to honor our pastors, Pastor Chris and Tatum. We have the best pastors. Let me tell you, um, Pastor Chris gets passionate about anything. Uh, if you don't know him, like if you, all the staff members know this, but he'll take me out to eat and we eat pizza. He gets passionate about eating pizza. Like that is how passionate Pastor Chris is. And more, the thing I love more than that is Pastor Chris, he, he loves life fellowship. He loves it. But there's nothing more th that he loves than the Lord. Uh, Pastor Chris has such a hunger for God that is so contagious among our staff. Like I, I strive to have that kind of hunger in the pursuit of God that Pastor Chris and Tatum have. So can we get up for our pastors one more time? They're incredible. I know they're watching online. And also, uh, speaking of online, we want to thank everybody who's here, but we also want to thank everybody who's joining us online and the men and women at both of our correctional facilities, Collin County and Bonham. Can we give it up for them, Life Fellowship? Thank you. Well, since I do have the stage, I have the, the, the short amount of time, I can tell you real quick a little bit of what's been happening in the students and what God's been doing the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've had something called Revival Nights, which was three straight nights. Um, and yes, I slept all day that Thursday, right after. I was so exhausted, but it was so rewarding. What God did in those three nights, um, it, was, it was incredible. I've never seen the touch of God on students' lives like I did those three nights. So uh, we had even... 45 students uh, come for the very first, like first time ever being in our building. And here's what I love is we get first time guests all the time. And sometimes they're from other churches and they've been to have a church background. But so many of these kids I talked to, they said, this is my first time in church ever. I said, oh, you picked the right place. I'm glad you're joining us. It was like truly that was revival. That was reaching the lost who have never even stepped foot into a church. And it was really incredible. And last Wednesday, we had a celebration night where we had baptisms, water baptisms and testimonies. And man, we heard some incredible stories. And even one um, of this kid named Gavin, who he, he comes from Princeton. We have a lot of kids come from Princeton on Wednesday nights. Like that's a, that's a little bit of a drive, you know, that's not just a walk over here. And he got baptized, and so many of his football teammates uh, from varsity came, and not just that, but his entire coaching staff came to support that night, and it was just, it was seriously 
so encouraging, incredible to see what God is doing in these teenagers' lives. And so today I get the honor of sharing a message with you today that has been stirring in my heart for months now, honestly. But I just believe that it is so uh, applicable to today and what's going on in our world and what uh, is going on in so many of your lives. And so the, the question today, and I encourage you to take notes, because let's be honest, you're not going to remember everything I say. You're not going to remember hardly anything I say if you don't write it down. Like, you guys may be smart, I get that, but you, we forget things. And so the question and the title of my message is actually um, this. It's, did you forget? How convenient, right? So take notes, please. Uh, did you forget? We are such forget, forgetful people. Um, let's try this even. I need your participation. So Find somebody, uh, don't, you to, don't be running around the auditorium. This is not meet and greet time. Turn around, find somebody you don't know, ask them their name, and then tell, tell them your name as well. And if you're online, uh, type your name in the chat box. You ready? Do it. Go ahead right now. Find somebody real quick, just a few seconds. Hey, hey, you're getting too loud. That means, that means it's meet and greet, so stop. All right, you got their name. Hey, you, okay, okay, you got it. You got their name. You don't need to hear their life story right now. So you got their name. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I am very convinced, statistics even say, that the majority of you will have forgotten that person's name by the end of the service. Why? Because we are so forgetful. We are so forgetful. Uh, I love pouring into this generation more than anybody. I love pouring into teenagers. This is actually called Generation Z, uh, if you keep up with that. And I, I've shared this before, and this is a... This is pretty sad, but I'll share it anyways. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to bash on the teenagers, but uh, according to statistics and studies, they did a study. I don't know how you do a study on this, but the average attention span of a person of Gen Z, so teenagers and younger, is eight seconds. So by the time I finish ending this sentence right now, they have already checked out. So I could use some extra prayer on Wednesday nights when I preach, because all I have is eight seconds, right, to win them over. Uh, but they also did a study, and I don't, Again, I don't know how you do this, but that the average attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. So let that sink in for a second. I love this generation, but man, what does that show? That shows that everything we get is in bite-sized information. Think about all the news, all the media, all, all, everything you see on social media. Everything is in bite-sized information. And so you forget about something a week, a week ago. Actually, you even forget something that happened yesterday because we get things so quick and we're so forgetful. You know how I even had teachers growing up that tell you, remember what you learned because you never know when you use it later in life. They're lying to you. I don't remember half the stuff I learned in school. I don't, like, because we are forgetful people. But keep in mind, I, I will give you guys credit. Do you know that now more than ever, people are remembering birthdays and anniversaries more than ever in the history of this world? Do you know why? Because, yeah, because Facebook tells you like, you're not that good of a friend. Like, you need Facebook to remind you of when your own wife, you and your wife's anniversary is, right? Facebook is so helpful because we are forgetful people. And the question again is this, did you forget? And sadly, the, the news and media and birthdays and anniversaries in school is not the only thing we forget about. All of us, at least once in our life, have forgotten about the goodness of God. Uh, I think everybody would say that. We've all forgotten at least once in our life about God. You know, God would do something incredible in your life one week, but then the next week you're mad at him because he didn't answer the prayer that you thought he should answer, and so you're mad at him and you've forgotten all that he's already done for you. Do you realize that if God, all he ever did for you was send Jesus to die on the cross, that is more than you will ever need? You could be broke, homeless, you could have nothing, you could have problems here on earth, but if Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, that's all you need. You don't need anything else. That is enough to scream and shout because of the goodness of God in your life. And I feel like some of you in here today is, you, you feel like, I feel like there's some here and some watching online, you feel like God's abandoned you. You feel like God's forgotten about your situation. You feel like God's forgotten about your marriage. You feel like God's forgotten about your child. You feel like God's just forgotten. And you feel like God has abandoned you. Maybe you used to love attending church, yeah, you used to love reading your Bible. You used to love singing praises to God, but now there was a tragedy, there was a, a death, there was a doctor's report, there was a quarantine, there was a marital problem, something that damaged your view of God. And now, instead of choosing to remember the goodness of God, you're choosing to ignore the goodness of God. 
And I want you to know that the question for you today is not, has God forgotten about me? But the question is, have you forgotten about God? Because I know this to be true. I know in Hebrews 13, 8, I know it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So guess what? If God was good to you yesterday, he'll be good to you today. If God is good to you today, he'll be good to you tomorrow. And if God will be good to you tomorrow, he'll be good to you forever. Amen? He'll be good to you. That is who he is. That is the goodness of God in our lives. But yet we forget so much about him. And you know why I love this book? It's because it screams of the goodness of God. Every word in it is true. Here's the thing. If you believe one thing in the Bible, you have to believe everything. It's all or nothing. It is the inspired word of God. Either you believe it or you don't. And I love this book because it screams of the goodness of God. It is the B-I-B-L-E. How many of you guys grew up? You know that song? Okay. I could use your help right now. We're going to sing this, okay? Sing the old uh, Sunday school rhyme. Okay, ready? I want it loud enough so people online can hear us. Ready? One, two, three. The B-I-B. Here you go. You guys do know, okay. Hey, that was good. You guys grew up in church, actually. Okay, that's nice. I'm glad you guys know it. And we sing songs about the Bible all the time, but it doesn't mean anything unless we live it out. We can sing songs all we want about God's word, but if we don't live it out and apply it to our lives and realize that God's goodness is from cover to cover of this book, it doesn't mean anything. And the question again is this, did you forget? Now, the first few books in the Bible are some of my favorites. I know that shocks people because they're like Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, that doesn't sound that great. But the journey of those books is absolutely incredible. Some of my favorites. Because God takes these people who are dumb, who mess up, who are like us, and he takes the Israelites from slavery to the promised land. And in between these 40 years of wilderness, there is highs and lows. Oh my gosh, if you would read it, it would like, you'd like, man, these people are just like us. We forget, they forgot about God all the time. And so that's what we're gonna pick up today in Deuteronomy chapter eight. Deuteronomy chapter eight, uh, verses 11 through 20. And uh, Moses is talking to the people of God and so they're going to put up on the screens, and then uh, what's going to happen is, I need your participation again, is I'm going to say the phrase, forget God, and it has a comma. It says it multiple times, and after it says that, it says, your God. I'm going to point to you. I want you to say, your God. Let's try it. Make sure you don't forget God, God. by not keeping his commandments and his rules and regulations that I command you today. Make sure that when you, are, when you eat and you are satisfied, when you build pleasant homes, when you settle in, when you build that nice house in McKinney you've always wanted, in the historic downtown, see your herds and flocks flourish and more and more money come in. You get that boat you've always wanted. You watch your standard of living go up and up. He says, make sure you don't become so full of yourself and your things that you forget God. You forget God, your God, the God who delivered you from Egyptian slavery. The God, think about it, the God who delivered you from your situation. The God who delivered you from your depression, the God who delivered you from your marital problem, the God who delivered you from whatever you're going through, don't forget who that God is. Think about the Israelites. This is their journey. It's so funny to me how they were. They're like us. God literally saved them from slavery in Egypt. But then you read a few chapters later, what are they doing? Saying, God, oh, we wish we were back in Egypt. We wish we were slaves. It was better back then. They forgot about God. God split open an entire sea, like an ocean, for them to walk through on dry land. And then the enemies come behind them and the water crashes in on all the enemies and kills them. And yet you read a few chapters later that the same Israelites are saying, God, do you even care about us? God, do you see where we're at? Do you see our situation? God sends manna. They they get manna, bread from heaven. I don't know about you, but I haven't had any sourdough bread fall from the sky lately. And they get bread from heaven. And they're complaining. God, we want to meet. God, we didn't want this. God, this is not what we asked for. This is not what we prayed for. And then also, God, like, tells them how to get water. Speaks to them how to get water, clearly. And yet, they disobey, and they're complaining, and they forget about God, much like us. And it picks back up from Moses, and he says, If you start thinking to yourselves, I did all this, all by myself, I'm rich, it's all mine, I love this next part. He says, well, think again. 
Remember that God gave you the strength to produce all this wealth so as to confirm the covenant that he promised your ancestors as it is today. And if you forget, forget God and start taking up with other gods, serving and worshiping them, I'm on record right now as giving you a firm warning. That will be the end of you. I mean it, destruction. You'll go to your doom, the same as the nations God is destroying before you. Doom because you wouldn't obey the voice of God by fellowship, even if you forget about God, he does not forget about you. I really hope that sets somebody free. I really hope you would know that today. Even if you forget about God in your life and you think you abandon him, he does not leave you. Let me ask you, why are you here this morning? Is there some of you that you, you feel like God has abandoned you? And maybe you're in that situation where you feel like God has left you, he's not even close to me, let me ask you, why are you here this morning? Chances are, if you're in that situation, you probably didn't wake up saying, can't wait to go to church, can't wait, hey kids, come on, load up in the car. Can't, no, you are here because God did not forget about you. You may have forgotten all about God, but he did not forget about you. There's a reason you're here. There's a reason you're watching online. There's a reason you're here on Sunday, September 27th. It's because God did not forget about you. Now, then why do we struggle so much to forget about God in our lives. I can sum it up to this one question I've heard from so many people, this one concern around uh, the goodness of God is this question right here. Why do bad things happen to good people? And if you notice, and you probably had people ask you that same question, why does God allow that? Why do bad things happen to good people? And you're probably thinking, oh, Pastor Logan, you're probably thinking, oh, you, your, your life is probably pretty easy. I mean, you're a pastor. How, you preach about the goodness of God every week. How can you forget the goodness of God? Well, let me tell you, there's been mul multiple times in my life where I've questioned and wondered, God, are, are you really good? Are you really, are you really like, there for me? When I was 13 years old, I was so insecure as a teenager, um, so insecure. Uh, if you would have asked me in high school even to, to do a speech, I remember my first speech in speech class. Uh, I, it was ninth grade, I just had to go up and say a one minute introduction. I had to leave the classroom and go to the bathroom to throw up because I was so nervous. And as a middle schooler, even eight and 13 years old, I was so insecure of what people would think about me, what people would say to me, that I would fake being sick so I didn't have to go because I was so terrified of what people would say to me. Let me ask you, do you think I was quoting scripture during that time? No, I was not. How about when I was 18 years old and I was a senior in high school trying to figure out the biggest decisions, what I felt like in my life at the time were, and I get a call, or my mom comes in that January morning of my senior year and she tells me that uh, my aunt had took her own life and committed suicide. I, do, you, do you think I knew God loves me then? No. How about right after that, I went into a four month deep, like horrible depression of myself was suicidal thoughts and anxiety beyond like what I could even imagine. And I, I was questioning God at every single turn of my life. And do you think I was singing the B-I-B-L-E then? No, I was not. I was hurt. I was frustrated with God. I questioned everything about God. I wondered if he really even sees my situation. Does he even care what I'm going through? I questioned it. And I had the question that many of you are probably asking, many of you have asked in your life, and maybe you're asking that today. You're saying, God, where are you? God, where are you? God, where are you in my family? God, where are you in my financial situation? God, where are you in my kid? God, where are you in the midst of this? God, where are you? And I didn't realize at the time, but I realize it now that it, it, it wasn't God that forgot about me, it was me that forgot about God. Because I've realized this too, is that Psalms 34, 18, it's one of the most powerful scriptures that got me through what I went through. And I promise you, it will get you through what you're going through. And it says this in Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. So when you think God is actually farthest away in your pain, no, 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 actually says uh, he's close. He's closer than ever. He is close to you. If you're hurting, if you're going through a situation, he is close. That's how near he is to you because he has not forgotten about you. I didn't realize it, but I realize it now. 
You know, you know, you go through a situation and then you realize later what the enemy meant for evil, God can take it and turn it for good. That's exactly what I've experienced. When I was 13 years old, I wondered, why was I such an insecure kid? Why did I struggle so much with insecurity? Well, I know now that God humbled me enough to where now if I earn anything or gain anything, I literally do not, like I give it straight to God, glory to God, because I know that I could have earned it myself. And so God used that situation and made me who I am today. When I was 18 years old and I heard that my aunt had committed suicide, I had so many questions and I wondered, God, are you even there? And I even struggle with this one a lot because I said, God, how can you take something that severe death and turn it for good? How can you take what the enemy meant for evil and turn that for good? Well, now I have been able to share this story to hundreds and thousands of teenagers and adults and I don't know, maybe it, maybe it helps you. Maybe it helps you realize, man, if Pastor Lowe, if he can overcome and get to the other side of that, then maybe I can too. I, I, I would never wish that on anybody, but man, if God can take what enemy meant for evil and use it for something good, man, and people get saved from that. What about when I was 18 years old and I went to depression and now I realize what happened through that? That was the lowest point of my life. I was the lowest point of my life. And I realize now that if God could take somebody like me at the lowest point of my life and still pick me up and still say, Logan, you have a purpose and still say, Logan, you're gonna influence teenagers and still say, Logan, I'm not done with you yet. If God can do it in me in that lowest point, I am certain he can do it again. I am certain he can do it in your life. I am convinced of that. So if you haven't been following us on social media, me and my wife, we, uh, we are expecting our baby girl, Winsley, this January, and we're so excited. Uh, yeah, we're so excited for that. We're so excited for God's answered prayer. And um, it's easy to praise God, right? It's easy to clap and thank God during that time when things are going great, right? But let me rewind this past November of 2019 when my wife and I found out we had a miscarriage and um, you don't expect something like that. A lot of frustration, uh, a lot of confusion. And even through the tears and the pain and even the car ride home, when we found out it was a miscarriage and they medically confirmed it, just leaned over to me and said, Logan, I, I have never felt the Lord so close to me in this moment. Like he was literally sitting right next to us in the doctor's office. And it's almost like God would not let us forget that he was right there. I don't know if God's done that in your life where he just like, he keeps reminding you that he's there. And that's what we felt. And that life fellowship is what peace is. That is what true peace is. Peace from God is not being calm when everything else in your life is calm and everything's perfect. That's easy to do. Anybody can do that. Having true peace from God is not the absence of your problems, but it's having God in the center of those problems. Doesn't mean the storm and the problems are gonna be taken away, but God's gonna join you in the middle of it. That is true peace from God. So I don't know your situation. I don't know why you're here. I don't know the struggles. I don't know the, the marital problems. I don't know the addiction. I don't know the depression. I don't know uh, the financial situation. But I do know this, and the Israelites learned this too is the moment you stop remembering how good God is, that's the moment you start forgetting how good God is. The moment you stop remembering how good he is, that's, how, that's when you start forgetting the goodness of God in your lives. Did you read through the Old Testament? You probably read and they've talked about building altars, right? Building altars, building altars, building altars. What is that? It's a sign of remembrance. God would tell them to build an altar so they would not forget how good God is. Some of you today, you need to build an altar. You need to build an altar in your life. You need to have something, a journal, a something, a sign in your room, something to remind you of what God brought you from. So that way, whenever you're going through tragedy, whenever you're going through heartache, you can always look back at the altar and say, God, if you've done it once, you can do it again. So where have you forgotten God in your life? Maybe it is a marital problem. Maybe the, the report was cancer. Maybe... Maybe you're even in here and you did have a family member commit, their, commit suicide and take their own life. I don't, I don't know what the situation, I, I really feel like even, um, I, I just feel that somebody in here, you feel 
that you are a bad parent and that God wants you to know that you are not a bad parent. I just keep, I feel that in my heart. I feel that you feel like you have failed God and you feel like God has left you and you feel like, why is my kid not living for the Lord? And I want to remind you that um, God did not make an accident. You are that kid's parent for a reason. It's designed. Knowing that God has not left you, that God has not forgotten you, it's not an accident. No, 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 it's designed by God that you are that parent and you are not a failure to him. I want you to know today, Life Fellowship, that God is still good. Even when you don't see it, even if you don't realize it, even if you don't understand it, God is still good and he's still on the throne. And if God can bring you to a situation, he's gonna bring you through it. If God, God did not carry you this far in life to leave you at the hardest part of your life, in your darkest moment. God did not bring you this far just to leave you. He is still good. And as I close today, I want to, I want us to agree on, on something. Can we all agree that we all are in need of God, amen? Every one of us. I don't care how holy you think you are or how horrible you think you are, every single one of us are in a deep need of God. You may think that what you need is that hobby, that person, that, uh, that pay raise, that new boat, that, that whatever you think you need, let me tell you right now, you don't. All you need is him. If I told you, you lost everything. When everything else disappears, when everything else, all this material stuff disappears in life, you still have him. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And this is what I've realized in my own life, and I wanna end with this, is it is impossible to forget the goodness of God in your life when you're always singing of the goodness of God. Have you ever done that where you, you don't wanna sing, but when you start singing, you can't be mad and sing to God at the same time? Like, it's just weird, you can't do that. And what I've noticed is that for my own life, whenever I don't feel it, if faith was based off your feelings, oh man, like <laughs> we should never base our faith off our feelings. That's like, Every time I feel like going to the gym, well, then I would never go to the gym if I felt like it. You know what I mean? Same thing with Jesus. You may not feel like lifting your hands. You may not feel like worshiping God, but it doesn't matter about your feelings. It matter what God's word says. And he's true and he's good. So what I wanna do is if you would bow your head and close your eyes, I've asked the band to sing a very particular song and it's the goodness of God. Because I believe that some of you, you need to build an altar right here. Um, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know where you feel like God has abandoned you. I don't know. I even feel like some of you, you, you got the report that it was cancer. And you, you prayed for healing, but you haven't gotten it. You may have not gotten it. You may, they may have passed away and you didn't get the healing on this side of eternity. But let me tell you, all the strife, all the worry, all the pain you experience on earth is just temporary. So when you get to heaven, it's constant joy, it's constant praise, there's no more sickness, no more pain. And I don't understand everything, but what I do know is that God is still good. God is still in control. God is not thrown off. God is not caught off guard by your situation. He's not shocked by it. You're wondering if your kid's ever gonna return to the Lord. You've been praying, God, please, 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 God. I want my kid to follow the Lord. God hears your prayers. God is still good. Don't forget that. Do not forget God. Do not forget him. Do not forsake him. He has never left you. And like the Israelites, don't be like the Israelites where you get caught up in this, oh, if something bad happens, then God must not be there. No, no, that's not true at all. God is still with you no matter any situation. You have to build an altar and you have to look back and say, God, if you've done it once, you can do it again. 